Hello, this is the Banky Players Podcast. Over the next few weeks, seven of us from the local area will be discussing topics that interest us. We are new to this sort of work and would appreciate if you would share our podcast with friends and family. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, I'm Paul and this is my co-host Lindsay. In this episode, we're going to be discussing school at the start of the pandemic, lockdown and how we felt about the results, and just the overall return to school in general. Well, first of all, we have to go back to when it all started, which is about a year ago today, there or thereabouts, where coronavirus just started to emerge in Scotland, and it was just becoming apparent about how big of a problem coronavirus might actually be. Yeah. When it first got announced that our exams were being cancelled, that's when it started to kind of sink in that it was going to be, like, life-changing. It is life-changing because this was something that had never happened before. Like, even during World War, like, exams were never cancelled. You know, we're, like, a part of history where this is something completely new and completely different, which nobody has ever experienced. Yeah, it was very strange, especially when, like, after the prelims and really throughout the whole year, you are working towards your exams and that's what the main focus is on. So for them not to be there, uh, it just kind of put everything up in the air for everyone because there was no certainty of what was going to happen. And it was around the time a year ago when we found out that predicted grades were going to be decided by our teachers and sent away to the SQA, which in itself was strange and it had a lot of problems that came with it, I feel like. Uh, What do you think? I mean, you might get teachers who are maybe like biased or, you know, like pupils more than others and there's maybe a lot of people who felt that their grade might be represented on, you know, sort of favouritism within the class. Yeah, and not not even just favouritism, but... For a lot of people, the exams are a real way to boost up your grade and maybe a prelim result doesn't fully represent what you're going to get in the end exam. So to not have the opportunity to be able to have that final exam and boost your grade up, it would have been quite worrying for, I know, a large amount of pupils to have their grade decided by all the work they'd already done in the year, which they couldn't really control. Yeah. Because, see, people always feel like, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens in prelims just as long as you pass them because you know you've got that final exam to sort of showcase your skill and showcase what you can do. And people quite often cram at the last minute for the exams. Mm -hmm. But for that to just suddenly disappear, it was so strange to think that your teacher was just going to decide or that's what it felt like you know your teacher is just going to decide what you get yeah definitely and and to us it, it was very like hard to hear but for the teachers as well for for that to get put on them and having to decide the fate of a lot of pupils by that I mean just the fact that a lot of people rely on the last year's results to get into that uni course they want or to get into that college course they want so for all that pressure to be put on teachers to kind of grade people without there being a, a, a strict guidelines of how to mark the pupils. It was quite worrying, yeah. I feel like. Well, I remember at sort of like the time where exams were cancelled, teachers started to panic because we had to, you know, build up evidence to show that you could get what, you know, your teacher said you could. So it's kind of like this mad rush to fit and test anywhere possible to be like okay there's a test tomorrow there's people who had you know tests with like one day notice and stuff like that to try and cram in as much as possible so even though exams are like a really stressful time and it was good that you know a wee bit of pressure had been lifted that we weren't going to have exams there was this massive focus on maybe last minute tests yeah definitely and for teachers to have to organize all that with with no sort of structure and for it to be quite frantic for pupils as well it was just an overall stressful time and 
as you said, like to not have the exams, there was there's pros and cons to it. Like the pros are there's it takes away that stress of exams, but also there was the added stress of trying to build up the evidence and having to get grades and, and up your score. That was definitely a unique sort of feeling. And then from, like, you know, we're relying on teachers' grades, you kind of go to two weeks before the exam results are released and the SQA announced that they're using a guidance system to ensure that there's no bias within schools and teachers aren't upgrading pupils. So they're using an average system based on schools' previous performances. Yeah, that was that was definitely, there was definitely an outrage about that. And especially because we went through this whole lockdown with being kind of told that the teachers predicted grades they'd been sent off and that was all sorted that was that was done but then for it to be released that that system was going to be in place just kind of a few weeks before we went back and um, that was definitely worrying because there was a whole lot of issues that came with that about uh, different schools being more privileged than others and schools like ours people's results being unfairly moved down or changed. Just, when you heard it, it was almost kind of like hard to believe. It was like, surely, surely not. Surely they're not going to do that. And then yeah. <laughs> yeah. they did. Yeah, and then there was the whole outrage about that. Uh, a lot of contradictions and people from different schools kind of talking and comparing biases in their schools. Yeah, um, you've got... And a lot of complaints. And that's when they put in the system where you could rebuttal uh, your grades. And they definitely took a step back in that one, but not. It took, them, it took them a while and sort of a lot of people showing their opinions and seeing how distressed people were to actually change it to the rebuttal system. And then I think, as I remember, eventually they just decided to, to move it back to the teacher recommendations. Yeah, because I think a lot of teachers were upset as well because they'd put so much effort into deciding like what each pupil who should get and you know, they'd really thought long and hard about every person's qualifications and then for the SQA to say, oh yeah, that's all good but we have to go by this guidance system, it was kind of like not fair on pupils or teachers. Yeah, it was backwards because surely you'd, you'd trust the teacher's judgment on each individual pupil being able to look at each person on an individual basis but for then a system based on averages to get put in place which doesn't take into individuality at all or or different people's sort of levels they're working at that average system doesn't see that but the teachers do so for the SKA to to put that in instead of the teacher recommendations, it definitely didn't go as how they planned. And it so. had a massive effect of schools in deprived areas who might not do as well, because obviously not every single year is the exact same, and you're going to have different abilities in each secondary year. It was so weird because your results weren't based on you, it was based on previous years. So yeah, in your postcode. Yeah, in your postcode. So people from deprived areas didn't get a fair representation in their grades. Yeah. And people from more privileged backgrounds got maybe upgraded or, mm -hmm. you know, got much higher than what they would have in a normal exam. Yeah. It opened up a big class debate. And yeah, yeah rightfully, rightfully so. I mean, it eventually got changed back to the teacher's recommendations and... But that was after a lot of fighting and the petition being made and people signing mm -hmm. petitions. Yeah, because we we got the results, like we got them posted out to us. Like we have certificates of the results that the SQA done using the average system. Yeah. So for the outrage to be able to move it in such a way that they totally redo the whole results, it just shows how much of a disaster it actually was. So yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely something that hopefully they've they've taken into consideration this year, and uh, they definitely have. So after we got the confirmed results around late August, it was time to go back in school, and there was definitely a lot of sort of mixed feelings about that. But I feel like in general, it was 
a sort of excitement and after being in lockdown for the past few months it was definitely a kind of breath of fresh air to go back and and see your friends you wanted a bit of like normality back in your life after being you know stuck indoors for all of summer whatever and it was a sort of good way to see your friends while still being allowed to and you didn't feel this guilt of you know breaking rules or whatever yeah and just being in school made such a such a big difference from from having to do online learning and it's that word normality like it did feel normal even though there was the restrictions in place like things like hours down in the corridors the the social distance in the corridors even though all that was in place and there was different restrictions it did feel normal yeah i feel like schools when we went back weren't that much different you know you were told to keep left no. but at the start you know you didn't have to wear a mask i think the only thing you had to do was try and social distance in corridors keep left where you could and wipe down wash your, your hands tables. yeah sanitize your hands yeah. and wipe down your tables after classes and it wasn't till later on until you know it started getting a lot stricter because people realized mm-hmm. that you know there were groups of like maybe like 200 pupils in a corridor you know changing classes mm-hmm. yeah it was a good idea on paper having the the sort of keep left rules in the corridors but realistically but you understand when when it's a change from classes and the bell goes there's so many people out in the corridors that it would it's impossible to keep socially distanced yeah. So to have a, such a sort of relaxed feel at the beginning to then get progressively stricter, it was it was kind of frustrating because you'd hope that it was strict at the beginning and sort of eased off after then, but it, it went complete opposite direction. Yeah, and like you had all the rules about, you know, keeping two metres apart, washing your hands, everything like that. But outside of school, you know, you weren't allowed to meet up with people. You weren't allowed to meet with, like, another household. Whereas as soon as you're mm-hmm. in school, you're shoulder to shoulder next to your peers and stuff like that. And it just felt yeah. like school was normal, but, like, th- the rest of the world wasn't. Like, nothing else was, and mm-hmm. shops weren't opened. It was yeah. a really, really strange time. Yeah, definitely. Even though it, it definitely was a breath of fresh air to be socially active again and be in school learning it, it definitely was refreshing and then as the months went on the mask rules were started to change it went from having no mask at all to wearing masks in corridors then it went s4s to s6s wearing masks full time yeah and uh, i wasn't too bothered about having to wear a mask full time because you know, you kind you do get used to it, but as I said, it was it was strange that it, it went from no mask to having to wear it all the time instead of the other way around. Yeah, it sort of sunk in that it was this was really really serious, and we weren't doing everything possible, and cases were mm-hmm. climbing and like within our school and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and that's when the realization hit that we might have to go back into sort of lockdown again yeah, and with learning. all the added stress of this year what's going to happen it was all not really known at the, when we went back to school at first like where there going to be exams and what was going to be different from last year so that there wasn't a disaster with results like there was so it was definitely it was definitely um and I just feel like, up in the air for everyone yeah i feel like this was a time where people got really really frustrated because you know we were allowed to meet friends in school and it was almost as if we were given like a hint of freedom and we kind of like we wanted it all you know we wanted to see our friends on weekends yeah. too we we had a sense of mm-hmm. normality within the school and we just wanted everything to go back to normal and it yeah, was definitely. i think it encouraged people to kind of break the rules because you know the rules weren't being followed in schools. Well, yeah, it makes you it makes you sort of question. There wasn't a, a structured plan, and you can't put all that on teachers to sort of monitor it and enforce it because it's hard to do that with so many pupils. Yeah, but anyways, I feel like lockdown as a whole and 
not even just lockdown, but the whole experience of going back to school after lockdown and having the restrictions and all that changing, it all kind of, for me anyway, it's all sort of merged into one. It's all amalgamated and it's hard to sort of pinpoint exactly what happened when because it has been so inconsistent throughout the past few months and the past year. Yeah, totally agree. And, you know, emotions were really, really mixed this time too with the return of school. And there's a lot of uncertainty about how the SQA can make sure that this fiasco doesn't happen again next year if the exams still aren't going on. Because at that yeah. point, we all just sort of assumed that exams were going to go ahead in 2021. Mm-hmm. We weren't Definitely. really sure. Yeah, obviously. Um, we've been proven wrong, I guess. But yeah. yeah, so that's the end of our segment. We sort of covered the return to school and how we felt about qualifications. We're going to pass it on to Lisa, Sarah and Joseph. Uh, we're in part two. They're going to talk about their feelings about learning during the pandemic. And now we're going to talk about learning and testing in a different school environment. Hi, I'm Lisa. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Joseph. So, I don't know about you, but like school has changed so much because of this pandemic. Like nothing is the same anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel as if it's been a big shock to the system coming back to school and our learning environment has been very different. It's been quite tough trying to get used to it. At the same time, it's been nice to be back and seeing everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was nice to be back and like, like that's the best part of school sometimes, like the social aspect. But that's also kind of taken away because of COVID because, you know, like we're all wearing our masks all the time. We have to be two metres apart, which obviously like we all support because, you know, we're not trying to spread COVID or anything like that. But yeah. It's not like what school used to be like. You you're, you can't like just sit next to your friends and have a laugh and stuff without getting, you know, shouted at or feeling bad about it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a lot more stressful with like the lack of support from like each other because we have to be two mirrors apart. And then also the lack of support from like our teachers because we they can't come like check our work or like because they would usually do like interactive work or group work with your friends. But like you don't have that anymore. And it's just a lot more. I don't know. Like It's just that it's harder to communicate with each other because... Mm-hmm. Your teachers can't even take your daughters home unless they've isolated for like is it thirty hours or something like that. Mm-hmm. Because it just it, it makes us that much harder in the fact that they're not allowed to come and talk to you. You're not allowed to take lunch times to go see them. It's mm-hmm. just became a very it's more independent than it was before. And um, yeah, definitely like you're kind of all on your own like the whole learning thing like especially while we're at home right now we don't get any support like not not in a whole negative way like our teachers do as much as they can but there's only so much you can do but you can tell it's been difficult for them this year as well to adapt to this style of teaching because it's not what they're used to either so it's Mm -hmm. difficult I think for everyone um and I feel as if one thing that's been extra tough this year is all the tests we've had to do. It's yeah. not been easy, yeah. but I understand why they were important. But I think with the cancellation of our MSQA um, exams, that it's just created such a... It makes every test like that a bit more stressful and difficult and just more hard, like difficult to cope with. Yeah, because like, they use it as evidence and you want to make sure that the evidence is good enough because... Like, that's what we're our entire grade is going to be based on this year is like if we've done well in every single test or not on like all our schoolwork as well like you have to make sure like you're on point at all times and it's not as relaxed as it used to be yeah like there's not a lot of pressure mm-hmm. there's not a lot of opportunity to kind of fail Breathe. yeah you know aha uh-huh. so like if you make a mistake or fail one test you feel as if everything's gonna go wrong for you like you feel as if you can't get the grade that 
you think you deserve because they could hold this evidence to you and say, oh, um, well, but you got a fail in this. Like, how do we know you're going to do really well? But I do think they won't use that. But it feels like they will. Like, they won't necessarily use everything, every piece of evidence. But they could. So it's just it's scary. It makes it a, a lot, a lot more stressful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like um, that's quite difficult because like we all thought, you know, this year it would be a little bit less stressful because it's our last yeah. year, but we kind of miss out on all the fun and social aspects of like sixth year and just have to do our tests, you know. It's quite a monotonous year, I think, for everyone. Yeah, so how, how have you been getting on with like studying and stuff? Yeah, at home it's a lot because we're being a lot more independent and like we've got like the entire day to do something. So we've got like a lot of free time to like get stuff done whenever we want. But that also holds a negative, like you procrastinate a lot because you think you have so much time and then you end up wasting the day by not <laughs> doing it. But yeah, it's nice being able to have all the time to do something instead of having like a fixed regimen. I agree with that like, to a certain extent like it is nice to be able to kind of do things on your own time but then it's like you end up leaving everything till three o'clock in the morning like yeah. the night before um literally I have so much homework I've not done um this week and it's just only Monday but that's okay <laughs> but yeah I have no motivation to do anything in school like it's just it feels like what's the point like yeah it's I not written it's down, a, it's not a test because it's online, you know, it's just annoying. I feel mm. like before Christmas, when we were all still in school, as much as you were still not very motivated to do stuff, you had kind of each other and you were all able to sit and talk about it and kind of go through it together where it feels as if you're going through it yourself, like you feel as if you're the only one who's fallen behind or you're the only one who's not coping with that because mm -hmm. I feel as if um, being at school as much as it wasn't a great situation like it was different and it was more difficult it was better in terms of like you felt as if everyone was going through it and you're going through it together mm -hmm. and you could work together and talk about it whereas you don't have that same um, lines of communication when you're at home you know you're just yourself and no one exacts it's going to text each other and be like, you wouldn't say the same thing to someone you would in a text as you would in person. Yeah. So I feel like mm -hmm. that's what we're really missing out on when we're working at home. Uh, and school was like such a community, you know, like you were all doing it together, you know, you were all stressing out before your prelims and your exams. Like, I'll never forget, <laughs> like, those last, like, last 10 minutes before your exam. But now it's kind of, you're by yourself all the time. I know it's the same for everyone, but and you, you can find community in the fact everybody's in by themselves in their house, but it's also like really lonely and yeah. that just makes the whole school work feel a lot more heavy, you know? Yeah, and I feel as if because this term we've had like no social life whatsoever, <laughs> it has made it so much more difficult. Whereas before Christmas, your social life was the time you spent in school mm -hmm. and as much as you didn't get much outside of school at least you had mm -hmm. you know, something um although like at the weekends and stuff it wasn't you still you weren't able to go anywhere like most places were shot but there was mm -hmm. times where we could do stuff and we did stuff when we could so it just made things feel that wee bit more normal yeah, I think we all just want, the, like, school was our normal, like, and it has been, like, our whole lives, basically. So mm -hmm. now it's all changing, like, while we're just about to finish it, it's so strange. Especially, like, you want to spend these last couple of um, months with your friends and doing, like, everything you want to do with them. But, like, we're on a Zoom call <laughs> talking to our friends, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the most we can do now, which, like, then... It's like, why am I doing schoolwork if I could be trying to talk to them as much as I can, you know? Yeah. yeah and I feel yeah. like in your house, there's so many distractions, or well, not so many, there's a lot of distractions. And there's that sort of just 
oh, but Netflix is right there. Like, why shouldn't I watch Netflix? Whereas when mm. you're in school, you don't have that same type of distraction. Like, if you're yeah. in a classroom, you know, you're not going to go, oh, I'll do my work in five minutes. I'll watch some Netflix <laughs> now. So it's, school could be tough, but it was that kind of structure, I feel as if, that we all kind of needed and we liked, especially when we, were, we went with, like, with no structure for such a long time. So to go back and get one, I feel as if it felt right, like it felt normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's just, I think we're all trying to do the best we can right now with our schoolwork and our studying and, and our socialising as much as we can while being safe, obviously. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's just, we. I think we need to try and find community in that and try and stick together and find, I, I guess, find hope. <laughs> I know and just remembering that we're not doing this alone like everyone's going through the same thing and I feel as if our teachers probably understand more than we think they do I feel as if sometimes you think that they're going to be really hard on you because you're struggling or you know you're not coping or keeping up I think they really do understand that these circumstances aren't normal and that you're still working hard and you're still trying your best you're just maybe feeling a bit off you know you do I feel as if yeah. in lockdown you have so many more off days than normal because every day just feels the same mm -hmm. so it can make you feel so like demotivated yeah definitely definitely and now the next set of people are going to talk about the current mm -hmm. lockdown Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is my co-host Louise and we are going to be discussing how the third lockdown has been the hardest one yet and how it has affected young individuals' mental health and motivation for schoolwork. For our first section, we are going to be discussing how we find an online learning. Um, I've been finding online learning uh, quite okay. Uh, however, I feel that the workload has been a bit much compared to what it would be if we were in school. Uh, like teachers are like, trying to cram more things into each lesson just so they can like, compact everything so that more people are like getting on everything so that they have the workload there and I feel like the deadlines and stuff some teachers are wanting them by the next day with the huge workload that they've been given but like some teachers are being more generous and like giving more time and understanding of what people are like and how people are feeling what about you how are you feeling about it? Well, it has certainly felt like it's become a crucial aspect to our education and learning for myself and many young peoples is having to quickly learn how to adapt to online schooling from our home life. And it has been difficult. I feel that we're not having like a proper structured routine that we would normally have in class. And it has been mixed views on how it has affected us and how I feel that what you said about how there's some and work to us like we just I feel like at this point I'm just waking up every day and doing the same thing and at this rate and from going from having a interaction of being able to socialise in class to being at home it has certainly been difficult. Yeah like I get what you mean like what is it you're doing to like help motivate yourself and stuff is there like anything that like helps you or like how, like, what, what makes you motivated to do your work or like, what doesn't? It has certainly been a struggling experience for me, like up and down, because I feel like, you know, personally, I feel like I have to complete assignments for the sake of it and make sure that my motivation levels stay intact and high. And I feel like what's motivating me to complete work is how this is like my last year of school and this is my last year to get the grades that. I need to do what I want to do in life and get into the course that I want to go to in uni. I do, I do feel stressed at times and there are times where I just want to procrastinate and avoid it altogether. However, I do feel that now more than ever, like how much effect it has had on my education and how important it really is to where you want to go in life. Like that's what's making me feel motivated. What about you? I have been struggling a lot with like staying motivated during this time and I do feel workload is overwhelming me at times 
Uh, however, like, I do tend to like split all my work into sections of like my, during my day just to try and like stop it from like taking over. Um, so that like, I have time to like equally work through each section, so I get my full, so it gets my full attention and I get good grades in it. So like I do try and keep my, myself motivated by getting things, so I can get things done and get work in on time. And like, even if I do feel like that one day when I do wake up, I do feel a bit too overwhelmed with all the work and don't feel motivated enough to do everything. I usually do email my teacher and like talk to them about it and say that maybe I'll get it in later on today. Maybe it might be due in late. But teachers are, are really understanding about it all because they know how overwhelming everything can be during this time. Yeah, I agree. But, like having that support is important as well. So like, how are you feeling about it? Uh, how, co- how we'll get our grades and stuff this year? Well, I close into last year, like, we had received our predicted grades from our teacher, judging from their pres- professional opinion and how they would have thought we would have gotten on with it regarding with coursework as ve- our evident. And it's going to be a similar experience for this year as well. Like, it certainly is bittersweet because you're not going to be doing the same thing by having a final exam and being assessed on everything and that can reduce our stress levels but at the same time I feel like being in school we've had much more assessments and each assessment is more important than they would be as opposing to if we were set an exam like every test is important but this is like going towards our predicted grade instead of like one final grade so it certainly has like benefits and limitations to it I feel like how about you? Yeah, I completely, I completely agree. Like, tests feel more crucial to pass them and get good grades in them now that obviously we don't get an exam. Like, I don't feel like like great like a great deal of confidence through having my grades marked this way as someone who hasn't done well in every test that's been given, like, due to the circumstances. Um, I do feel quite anxious about about how my grades will come out uh, in August. I feel like maybe I won't get the right grades I need to get into my university course that I want to get into. So it does make me did feel did anxious that maybe I might not get it due to the circumstances. And I feel like if there was an actual exam, I feel like I'd probably do better than what I have been yeah. uh, due to like, being able to study longer and be able to like get everything down instead of being like rushed into tests. Because I just feel like that puts a lot of people under more stress. They feel like they have to do well. And if they don't, then it's the end. Yeah, so, like, like, teachers could have worked like worked it out better, even though they're under time crunches as well. Like, they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know how things are going to work through. Yeah, it feels like we're just playing it by ear. Like, sometimes the teachers might know how it's going to happen, and us as well. And how, like, we have to... If we feel like I've like failed some tests and I feel like that's going to like downgrade like what my predicted grade will be, like one test might affect the others. Like it's just, it's hard to like stay that motivated to try and like pass every test so that you get to the grade that you need in order to do our uni. Because like we're both in our last year, so we're definitely like relate to relying on this like to happen and it's hard to maintain that, I feel like. Yeah, I completely get that. Like, I just feel as though, like, obviously with this being our last year and a lot of people's last years at school, it's just put a, an extra added load of pressure on top of us. So that, like, for tests and stuff, like, we just feel like there's not another option because obviously, usually we'd have every field of test, it would be fine. Every part, like, obviously we'd have our exam if we got put forward for it. But now it's like our test is the only evidence we have. So, like, with that being our only evidence, it, like, kind of puts us in, like, a bit of a, particularly a bit of a narrow path. Like, we don't know, we can't do anything else other than our tests and we have to do well in them for to get the good grades that we need. Yeah, that's very true. How do you feel about return to school soon for blended learning and full time? Um, Being perfectly honest, I am feeling quite anxious about like obviously returning back full time when it happens like due to what happened the last time we went back full time we weren't in for a long period of time we were only in for like three months or something like that and in that three three four months like 
a lot of people got sent home to isolate, so a lot of people lost out on that interaction in school for learning. So, like, it just, we don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't know what the numbers are going to be like when we go back. Like, it's just going to feel like a lock for a lot of people that a lot of people won't want to go in due to, like, they don't know if something's going to happen or, like, how we're going to have to isolate. But, like, it is a really overwhelming feeling to, like, not know what's going to happen, especially when we do go back full time after Easter or when it does happen. But like with the blended learning, I do feel like it is a step forward from being in the house doing our school. I feel like it will help a lot of people like with their work, like obviously their interaction with the teacher, like face to face. It will help if they have to have stuff explained to them and stuff. And it also means you can have that social aspect with people in school with like maybe you're seeing your friends for the first time in months yeah. like it will help people mentally like with their social like, like social contact so there is what like pros and cons to it like there is like people's mental health like with seeing people again but then also with the anxious feeling of not knowing what will happen maybe what if they accidentally are too close to someone and they end up having to isolate like it's just that, that overwhelming thought how are you feeling about it? Like I agree, like there's certainly like aspects where I do feel anxious because we don't know what's going to happen. Like we might just get told to go back home again, and there are there are alternatives being put in place by having like self kit tests now. So like we know if someone tests positive, we can do it before or after sending people home to isolate, being in contact. Like there are people that I, that I know who've been sent home like four times and missed like eight weeks of school almost and that certainly had like a toll on a person's education and mental health by not being able to like associate with your family and friends and as we are going to return to school very soon like for blended learning I feel like it's good to try and ease us back into it gradually but and then soon enough we will be full time again after the Easter holidays as we're hoping that will happen. And I do feel that myself and many people do feel anxious and nervous because we have been off, like you said, for a very long time. And although things are slightly getting better, there are key areas where people have missed out on a lot of the course, such as the practical subjects and how people will not be feeling that they're taking in the information like they would have if they were in school than through a computer screen so it certainly has limitations and how when we're going back there are people like you said they're going to be excited to see their friends in order to help their mental health because they might have not seen them since we went back into lockdown and that's almost been three months now without like I know that I haven't seen like some of my closest friends that I would have if I was in school so it's just important like having that more structured routine in school for your education and also for yourself to have that social interaction by seeing people. So there is, I do feel anxious but at the same time I'm excited to go back to see like friends. Yeah, especially at everyone at the same time and stuff. Yeah. I do feel like with the way the blending learning is working out is like obviously our surnames are going in so we're going into two different groups. So I do feel it is like obviously it's a step forward from being in the house. It's working towards a progress of getting back. So I do feel like they are doing positive steps to get us back full time to get our learning back on, on track. Like I because I know quite a few people who have struggled with like in in home learning. Like they haven't been motivated. They haven't wanted to do it. They feel really alone and stuff. And they're like they don't have motivation because they're not seeing anyone to help them. And obviously with school work, they feel like it's overwhelming with the amount they're getting and then obviously teachers are busy as well trying to because it's a new thing for teachers yeah because they're obviously they're obviously didn't like, train to be an online teacher they were hoping they they obviously planned for us to be in and a lot of teachers are excited to get for, to get us back into school be able to get us teaching face to face and get everything back to a bit of normality at, at times so like, i do feel it is a step a step forward but it's going to be a, a struggle for quite a few people and at different moments in the, in time like obviously not everyone will be so up so up for going back straight away like some people are still really anxious about it and are do have worries 
So like I with them all being like put into consideration, like they have thought about it and this is the best route for them to take. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like we have been in lockdown since December and it's coming in mid March now. And things are starting to look up and things are getting better slightly, but it's hard to imagine at the same time it is going to end anytime soon. Like they say that well and more people are getting vaccinated, which is good. But it just feels like, you know, in the first lockdown, we had nice weather, which kept us occupied. And we had like, during the second lockdown, we had Christmas to look forward to. I feel like this lockdown, you know, it's in the winter time, it's more dark and it's been harder to get out. And I feel that I'm not really completing my schoolwork till late at night, like just having so much going on. I feel like teachers are giving us more work than we would have to complete in school. Because it's different, like being at home, because there's other things that you have on and what you want to do. And I feel that the start of our lockdown has felt like a drag and the news has been negative, but it's been coming into a year being in the lockdown altogether. And I feel like people are just desperate to go back to their normal lives. You yeah, definitely. Like a, and like a lot of people are wanting their lives back to the way it was. Like a lot of people are getting sick of being in lockdown. Like they feel like they've been in it far too long and like it's taken over. Like last year, for the first lockdown, we obviously had the summer and stuff. We were in spring, going into summer. So like we had all the nice weather, the nice warm temperatures and stuff. So we could obviously sit in our back gardens, go out walks and stuff with like, our families that like, we stayed with. And and then obviously Christmas we had our lockdown again, but we, that time we were allowed to see our families for that day and like be with them. Yeah. Obviously, because it's like such a big time, so it gave people a bit of like hope that everything was going to go back. But like this lockdown, it's been tighter restrictions. We've not been allowed to see people and stuff. And obviously the weather's kind of put people on a downer. But obviously the weather's not been great, it's been raining, it's been cold, it's windy, it's snowing, <laughs> like the weather's been every, up and down all the time. So like, I think people are just trying to hope for the best and hope that if, if the vaccine's been spread out quite quite worldwide, that everything will start to get back to normality and like we will get a good summer and like we'll, with us leaving school, we'll get good grades and everything. So people are just trying to look up from what's going to happen. So like with people being like that, it's like giving other people a bit of hope and stuff to help, uh, obviously motivate other people to help and obviously keep all the restrictions tight and hopefully they'll get loosened. So people can see our families, people can uh, see our friends, everything like that. Yeah, just like trying to get normal because like young people are growing up in this as well and that might seem normal to them, but it just isn't. And... I do feel at times like I can feel mentally and emotionally exhausted like just simply feeling that I have nothing to talk about and sometimes I just don't want to ask for help but I just want everything done and, but it's important to have that support as well and I feel like this lockdown and all of them all together but for me personally I feel like this has taken like a huge toll on personal health like in my mental health as like thousands of people are tired of isolation and the uncertainty of like lockdown life because we feel like we know something and then like there's just more getting added to it. But yeah. I feel that having that support for young pupils is very important because it has a mental effect on people's life in general as well as their personal life and, and their education. Yeah, definitely. Like... I feel like young children that are growing up through this, like the younger ones who are who do need to learn how to socialise with people and have like have that like grasp on things, I feel like it's gonna be like a lot tougher for like young children to like know what to do. Like they went they went from being able to be out and play with their kids, like playing with the other kids and like being in school all the time and having that like schedule and that routine to like obviously meeting their teachers all the time. And um, obviously with this happening, it's like kind of just like shook the balance of stuff. Like obviously like teenagers and like young adults and all ages, it has had an effect on them with being in lockdowns all the time. 
I just feel like it's hitting everyone differently. Like young kids obviously aren't getting their, like, their social aspect through with young other kids and like being able to like go up to other kids and play with them. But like with like our generation, like teenagers and stuff, I've been able to like, obviously talk through social media and stuff. So they have been able to like interact, but just not from an actual social like face to face interaction, which is tough for a lot of people because a lot of people do need that so like that face to face interaction to like yeah. feel how they feel about it. But like obviously and like adults as well, like a lot of people aren't working there now due to obviously everywhere being shut. So like it's putting a lot of people in like pressure of trying to work things through with like money and like obviously how to socialise again and how to like feel going up to someone again with with obviously with our masks and everything on so which will probably be like a rule for quite a while after this. Like when things do go back to normal, we probably will have to keep our masks on just for another while longer, just so they can keep everything under control. Yeah, for safety measures as well. And so like within like our school life and our personal life, it certainly has like aspects to it. And I agree, like, I feel like people feel that and I feel that this time around our mental health is more important than ever because like people have been isolating and not being able to interact and just like being stuck to the computer screen to try and teach themselves a subject that teachers are trying to help them with and also like socializing with people in your class like from online I feel that we just don't want COVID to claim more lives, mistreatments, and so it doesn't have an irreversible damage to long-term mental health. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, we've got a lot of things to put take into consideration and stuff. Like, hopefully lockdown does end soon, but, like, not at a dangerous rate where it's putting other people at risk. Yeah. Like, because all the people with underlying health conditions do worry, like, obviously that stuff will happen and like they have to try and keep people safe of it like obviously to try and keep the numbers down so we aren't losing more people because each person losses there are people in their families that do like obviously worry about everything else so like yeah it's putting a lot of pressure and strain on other people with like if they do lose a family member it's going to be hard to deal with and then especially with the restrictions and stuff some people can't go and see like go to the funerals and stuff and like yeah. be with their family during the hard time that they're, they're going through which is such a sad thing like when it's time to be with family and time to support each other it's a lot harder to do with all these restrictions but they have to have restrictions there to support everyone else to keep everyone else safe so they, the restrictions are just for a better picture to make sure everyone is kept safer and and they feel like they're in a safer environment. But like hopefully it's all like like there is other alternatives soon, like to keep people safe with the vaccines going on. Like everyone can they're getting it's like produced like quite a large rate. Like a lot of people have been getting them, like getting their letters through for their vaccines. So like soon obviously I think they said that hopefully the like, it'll be like teenagers and like young adults soon like later on through the year so hopefully everything gets done quite quickly and everyone's safe through it all yeah. remembering however you're feeling is valid and we all are feeling things differently thank you for listening